Fanfic Corner, presented by Jennifer. The Search, written and read by Jennifer. Okay, now before we get started, I'd just like to say two things. For number one, if I mispronounce any names, either names of characters or names of planets, I apologize. Second, this story takes place between episode 14, The Jedi, and episode 15, The Believer, of The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. It had been five years. Five years since they fought to free Lethal from the Empire. Five years since they became heroes. Five years since she lost him. In those five years, Sabine had never stopped missing Ezra or loving him. The boy had been an annoying brat when she first met him, but over the past four years they had lived and worked together on the ghost, things had changed. Ezra was no longer the scrawny little kid they had encountered on Lothal, who followed her around like a little lost puppy. He had grown into a strong young man and had grown into the, his force powers, becoming a Jedi in his own right. Then he had gone and done something foolish. He had stayed on Thrawn's ship as the Purgles were preparing to jump into hyperspace. Sabine knew why he did it. He had seen Kanan sacrifice himself to keep all of them safe just days earlier and believed it was the only way. That didn't mean that she hadn't been mad at him for doing it. But as the years had gone by, that anger had changed to sadness and loneliness. But her broken heart? That was still present. Zeb had his friendship with Callus, and Hera had the son Kanan had given her. Sabine had no one. So when Ahsoka had reached out to her, asking for help in finding Ezra, so he could help Luke Skywalker rebuild the Jedi Order, Sabine hadn't hesitated. She was going to find Ezra and let him know what a stupid choice he made five years ago and how worried she had been ever since. And then she was going to press her lips to his and vow to never let him go again. Sabine sat in her cabin looking at the picture of Ezra. She didn't have any hollow images of him, except the one of him and his parents. So she had done a portrait from memory, not long after he had disappeared. She didn't want to forget anything about him. Sometimes she would take out the picture of him with his parents and try to imagine what a child she had with him would look like. Because that's what she wanted, to be married to Ezra and have his child growing inside her. A knock sounded at her door. Come in, she said, pushing the hollow projector under her pillow. The door opened and Ahsoka came in. We should be landing soon, the Turiga said. Though Sabine tried to hide it, Ahsoka could tell what her young friend was thinking through the force. Hey, she said, putting a hand on Sabine's. We'll find him. I know we will. It's been five years, Ahsoka, Sabine said. He could be anywhere. And why didn't he try to contact me or Hera in all that time? Because Theron is with him, and he has no way of knowing we won the war and that the Emperor and Empire are gone. Sabine knew Ahsoka was right, but she still couldn't help but think that she may never see Ezra again. But she would never say anything to Ahsoka. The Taruga had lost so many people in her life. First it was her family, when she was taken from to the temple. Then it was the Jedi and Padawans that she had grown up and trained with. Finally, it was her master. The only connection she had to her life before the Empire was Rex, and he wasn't going to be around much longer. They'd check this planet, and then Sabine would insist they go home so Ahsoka could spend what little time Rex had left with him. Sabine looked around. She had never been to this planet before. But Ahsoka had called it Rada. There, was, there wasn't much there. There was a small settlement, but most of what a S Sabine could see was open plains. She highly doubted they would find Ezra here. It's starting to look like it did when I first came here, Ahsoka said. You were here before? Sabine asked. 
a year after the Clone Wars ended, before I became Fulcrum, I was hiding from the Empire. This was a farming planet back then. It seemed like a good place to hide. You don't strike me as the kind to do farming. I didn't work with, in the fields. I fixed the equipment. And when the Empire came, I helped my friends fight back. Sabine looked at her friend. Did you have a lot of friends <clears throat> here? A few. But six, Kedan, her sister Mira, the twins, Hoban and Nira, Vartan and Saladin, were really good friends. Are they still here? No, the twins died during the fight against the Empire, and the others joined the rebellion. I don't know what happened to them. They stopped before a house at the edge of town. This was my house, Ahsoka said. It's nice. Sabine said when they entered. I know it does. I know it's not much, Ahsoka said, but it was on the edge of town, which gave me plenty of chances to go out on the plains whenever I wanted. They brought up memories from when I was a child on Chile. There were also caves not that far off where I hid supplies, just in case. The two women looked around the small house. It looked clean, indicating that someone lived there. Not wanting to upset the new owner of the house, they decided to leave. As they were, Something caught Sabine's eye. Something familiar. She thought she saw a stormtrooper helmet. Hope began to well up in her chest. Ezra had collected Imperial helmets. The ghost was just as littered with his helmets as it was covered in her artwork. Sabine! Ahsoka called. Come on! Sabine followed her friend out of the house, trying to figure out if she had really seen a stormtrooper helmet or if she just had just wanted to see it. Where are we going? Sabine asked Ahsoka. If I've learned anything from my old master that has nothing to do with the Force, it's that the best place to gather information is the local cantina, the Taruga said. The cantina was just how Ahsoka remembered it. She half expected to see Salvin behind the bar and her other friends at their usual table. It brought, up memory, it brought memories back just being there and made her wonder where her friends were and how they were doing. I used to meet my friends here a lot once their shifts in the field were over. We would talk, have something to eat and drink, and sometimes play a few games. And if I ever needed to, I could talk to Salton. He was an older Taruga and kind of took me under his wing. Did you love him? As I would an older brother. There was only one I loved with all my being. A human senator about my age. Really? Sabine asked. She had never heard her friend talk like this. Really? His name was Lux. Lux von Terry. After we find Ezra, I think I'll try to find him. Sabine looked at the older woman. She knew that look. It was the same one Hera had when she talked about Kanan, and the same one she got when she thought about Ezra. Ahsoka was in love. Once we find Ezra, I'll help you find Lux, Sabine said. He's probably on Coruscant, or his home planet. I'm sure he's forgotten all about me and has married some noble girl from his home planet, Ahsoka said. Not if he loves you as much as you love him. Taking her friend's hand, Sabine looked right at her. You're helping me find the love of my life. It's only fair that I hope you find yours. The two women found an empty table. Oddly enough, the same one Ahsoka and her friends always used, and took a seat. Despite the planet being small and scarcely populated, the cantina was busy. Never seen a Mandalorian before, someone said, coming up to their table. <laughs> At least not one that removed their helmet in front of someone. I've heard of those, Sabine said. They follow the way of Mandalore, but they're different from those born on Mandalore. So you've never encountered one, the woman said, taking a seat at their table. Sabine shook her head. Where did you encounter one? Ahsoka asked. The first time was on a planet called Shorgan. We were defending where we defended some fishermen from a band of Kalatun raiders. And the second time was on the planet Nervos. Both times it was the same Mandalorian, and he had a small child with him. I've met him, Ahsoka said. It was on the planet Koravan a few weeks ago. You must be Ahsoka, the woman said. He talked about you when I last spoke to him. The woman looked at Ahsoka as if trying to size her up. You wouldn't happen to know where they are. I've been looking for them for a long time, with no luck. I don't know, Ahsoka said. 
the child is force sensitive, so I sent them to a Jedi temple so the child could choose its own path. I don't know where they went after that. So what brings you here? The woman asked. We're looking for a friend, Sabine said. She showed her a hollow image of a picture she had made of what she thought Ezra would look like now. Have you seen anyone like him? The woman looked at it. He looks familiar, but I can't place him. Sabine looked a little disappointed. She had really hoped that they would find Ezra. Now it looked like they would be returning to Coruscant without him, and would have to put their search on hold. Excusing herself, Sabine made her way to the bar to get their drinks. Your artwork has improved, but it's not exactly right, someone said. Sabine stilled. She knew that voice. Smiling, she turned around. He looked older than she remembered, and was taller than her. She would guess as tall as Kanan had been. His hair had grown out, and he had it pulled back exactly the way Kanan used to, and he had a small beard, just like Kanan's. But his eyes were the same blue she remembered. Ezra, she said. Then, not caring that he was in the middle of a cantina, she threw her arms around him. Pulling back, she looked at him, a smile on her lips. I've been looking all over the galaxy for you. Sabine looked down at the positive test and smiled. It had been a little over a year since she and Ahsoka had found Ezra and brought him home. She and Ezra had married not long after that, and Ezra had stepped into his new role as a husband, a teacher at Luke's new Jedi Academy, oddly enough in the old Jedi Temple on Coruscant so he could be close to his sister Leia, a member of the new Jedi Council alongside Luke and Ahsoka, and as a big brother to Jason. Hera had been happy to have Ezra back, almost as happy as Sabine had been, and Zeb and Callus had come to Coruscant for the wedding. Sadly, Rex had quietly passed away in his sleep a month after the wedding. Ahsoka had grieved for her friend for a week, but her rekindled romance with Senator Bonteri had eased the pain a little, and the two were in the process of planning their wedding. Here you are, Ezra said, entering the room at the temple. What's going on? Smiling, Sabine handed him the test. Ezra looked at it and then back up at Sabine, a mix of shock, joy, and pure love on his face. We're going to be parents, he asked. Sabine nodded, smiling. Ezra pulled her into a, an embrace and kissed her. Several months later, the newest member of the ghost crew slash family was born. Spectre 8. Kanan, Rex, Bridger, Ren. Okay, before we si I sign off, um, one, uh, one thing I'd like to touch on, and that is if any of you out there have a fanfic you would like me to, or a short story, you would like me to do a reading on for Fanfic Corner, you can send it to me at my Tumblr account, my Facebook page, or my Facebook group. Uh, a couple of things to keep in mind. First off, please be sure to include your name. And if you're submitting someone else's work, the name of the author. And this is just solely so I have someone to credit. Um, please keep them short. My camcorder will only record up to 30 minutes before it kicks over to another video. Uh, if they are too long, if I can tell they are too long, I will divide them up into parts. Um, please keep them clean and appropriate. Um, any parts or words that I deem inappropriate for children and or sensitive audiences, I will clean up and gloss over. But if there's too much, I just won't do a reading. If it is a holiday fanfic or short story, please be sure to submit it two months before the holiday and to include the name and date of the holiday. This is basically so I can get the fanfic or short story read and posted a month before the holiday. Finally, please be honest. If I learn that someone has submitted a fanfic or a short story without the author's permission, I will not only remove all corresponding videos, but I will no longer accept anything from the sender. Okay, as um, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, thank you for watching, and have a very nice day.